Hello and welcome to Cybersecurity Awareness TV, episode number 457, recorded May 11th, 2024. Join me, Professor Mac Jackson Jr., as we navigate through the digital landscape, gear up for a thrilling ride through the cybersecurity tips, news, and gain expert knowledge to become a champion in cybersecurity awareness, folks. Hey, remember to subscribe and like down at the bottom here to the show and here at WWDB TV. To find out more about my company and my show here, you can go to my website at MacJacksonJR.com. That's MacJacksonJR.com, Mac Jackson Jr. In today's show, cybersecurity news, we're going to talk about another big cyber attack, folks, that has hit Ascension. Ascension Healthcare. They've been under a big cyber attack, folks. And like we've talked about on the show, it's a major one that affects all of us. In our second side, we'll talk about the FBI scams, how the FBI has warnings of the increasing threat of AI. Yes, folks, AI involving in cyber crimes, utilizing artificial intelligence. We'll talk about that. Folks, we have a lot to talk about today, a, a great lineup. Definitely stay tuned. We will be right back here at Cybersecurity Awareness TV after these messages. Hello, folks. This is Mac Jackson Jr. from Vanderson Cyber Group. The problem with businesses today is that they are affected by cyber attacks from around the world. But companies are not sure of what to do. Normally, they are reactive instead of proactive. But folks, cyber attacks can affect your bottom line and will affect you financially, legally, and your business reputation. Here at Venice Cyber Group, we can help you develop a policy by training your employees on what to do if they are involved in a cyber attack and how to mitigate it and fight against it. Folks, we call it here, hashtag stay cyber woke. And that's Vanners Cyber Group here in Las Vegas and around the world. You can reach me, folks, at VandersonCyberGroup.com or my website, MacJacksonJr.com as well. Here locally, 702-868-0808. Give us a call today, folks. We must fight back. Hey, folks, welcome back to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. We here at Cybersecurity Awareness TV have discussed the rise of cyber attacks in the healthcare industry, the financial industry, banking, and alike. But, folks, this episode we're talking about the healthcare industry, again, is the primary target for cyber attacks, particularly ransomware, due to the critical role hospitals and clinics pose a vast amount of sensitive patients' data, making a lucrative target for attackers to seek using ransomware payments. The urgency of medical services also increases the likelihood that organizations paying ransomware to restore access to essential operational systems and patient records quickly. This vulnerability is very important because it offers um, cybersecurity hackers resources where they can take part of and they can take advantage of folks and this is something we really should be concerned about the recent cybersecurity data breach of ascension healthcare has significantly disrupted the operations and underscores a critical vulnerability in the healthcare cyber infrastructure last wednesday the operation experienced a unusual, quote, unusual activities uh, for selected technology networks, leading to the immediate and substantial suspected uh, efforts by the IT teams and the hospitals to shut down some of their operations. Clinical operations have been impacted with this sort of electronic healthcare records, um, phone communications, and other vast areas of the operations will become inaccessible. To give us more of an impact of this particular story, we want to have you focus on this news report that we found from WGM Chicago. A suspected cyber attack tonight against a national health care system. That system serving several hospitals in the Chicago area. WGN's Jenna Barnes is joining us live from Lincoln Park now. Jenna. 
Yeah, Ray and Micah, we are at St. Joseph Hospital. This is one of more than a dozen Ascension hospitals in the Chicago area. And tonight, Ascension says because of this cybersecurity incident, its electronic medical record system, MyChart, is not available and it is delaying some elective procedures and appointments. Ascension says it first noticed unusual activity on select technology systems Wednesday and immediately began an investigation, hiring a third party cybersecurity consultant to help. Ascension saying in a statement, there has been a disruption to clinical operations and we continue to assess the impact and the duration of the disruption. It's becoming commonplace. Cyrus Walker is CEO of Chicago-based cybersecurity company Data Defenders. He says news like this is no longer a surprise. It's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's, it's, it happens. Uh, what is your capability to respond to it? Ascension is the largest Catholic health care system in the country. It runs 140 hospitals nationwide. Local media in Kansas and Florida report some hospitals there are rerouting ambulances because of the incident. Local hospitals that operated autonomously uh, previously to being bought up by systems are now operating under a common technology infrastructure. Walker says that's helpful for streamlining operations, but it comes with a big downside. The challenge there is that if one hospital is compromised due to vulnerabilities, that means that a lot of those hospitals could potentially be compromised as well. This cyber attack comes on the heels of a ransomware attack on Change Healthcare owned by United Health and a suspected ransomware attack on Lurie Children's Hospital just a few months ago that took its systems offline for weeks. Hospitals are increasingly the victims of hackers because they have a trove of valuable data and an urgent need to get back to business. It makes them a rich uh, and viable target for malicious actors for the financial gain that can come as a result of a successful attack. We have asked Ascension Illinois what specific impacts patients here in the Chicago area are experiencing, and we have not heard back from them. It is worth noting we have seen ambulances arriving here at St. Joseph tonight. We're live in Lakeview. Jenna Barnes, WGN News. Folks, the Ascension Healthcare in their response to this data breach has uh, enacted a robust protocols in maintaining the patient care and to minimize this disruption. The organization has engaged in a cybersecurity firm that would help them investigate to determine the extent of this data breach. While the specifics of the data breach are still under investigation, the potential of the impact to the patients and to the business are still under investigation and it will be substantial. To continue our report, look at this story we found from TMJ4 news in West, um, West Wisconsin. Mm. An alert tonight about a cyber attack targeting a major health care network disrupting operations at Ascension Hospitals here in southeast Wisconsin and across the country. TMJ4 News took phone calls and emails today from people worried about not being able to receive care. New tonight, Mike Biermeister talked to a cybersecurity expert about what may be behind the attack. Ascension Healthcare dealing with a cyber attack. The healthcare provider detecting unusual activity on its computer systems Wednesday. Some patients were turned away at Wisconsin locations like Ascension St. Joseph. A parent who didn't want to reveal her identity says she had to reschedule appointments for her two children. They didn't say how long it might be before they're able to call you, whether it's like another day or a week. No, nobody told me that. They just said, write it down. The scope of the attack remains unknown at this time and if any data was compromised. But Ascension says in a statement that there was a disruption in clinical operations. This is not outside of norm, unfortunately. Alex Holden is a cybersecurity expert and has been monitoring the situation since the news broke. It looks a lot like a ransomware attack and um, the, the impact of it is unknown. In some cases, uh, organizations are able to uh, shut down their systems to stop uh, the bad guys uh, from dwelling in the systems before something bad happens, but sometimes it's already too late. Ransomware locks computers so hackers can demand a fee. Typically, like when we work these type of cases uh, with the victims, we also tell them, t tell as little as possible until you know things for sure. The health system says in a statement that it will notify patients if any sensitive data was compromised in the hack. There is a potential that Ascension still can uh, get uh, the bad guys in 
Uh, and potentially that uh, the bad guys are still inside of the system and they can affect the third parties as well. Holden says that in the meantime, to be patient and check in with your provider if you have future appointments. In Mequon, Mike Biermeister, TMJ4 News. Thanks, Mike. We caught wind of this story thanks to a viewer who wanted to stay anonymous. Keep in mind, you can email or reach out to us on social media with any story ideas. We do read your messages and are listening to your feedback. Folks, these instances of these types of cyber th attacks are threatening all different aspects of infrastructure in our society, especially in the healthcare industry where healthcare providers face cyber attacks like the ones highlighted by the incident that we see at Ascension. It shows folks that hospital and healthcare organizations all must be proactive in their cybersecurity measures to continue improving their responses and their strategies to safeguard sensitive data, in, especially in the healthcare industry. Folks, like we say every week on the show, Cybersecurity Awareness TV, hackers are always looking for vulnerabilities things that they can exploit for from our businesses, from small operations to large corporations. If these hackers can hit large corporations with these type of cyber attacks, they can hit your small business as well. Small businesses are low hanging fruit and making it easier for attackers to attack because small businesses cannot afford and most of them do not have the infrastructure like a large hotel or a healthcare facility. Folks, remember, stay cyber woke. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, my name is Edgar Alejandro. I'm the co-founder of Rising Again Productions. So we've been here in Vegas producing films for the past couple of years, and we've seen our fair share of studios. We've worked in our fair share of studios, and to be honest, WWDB TV has been our favorite by far. John is so welcoming. Uh, the space is wonderful. It's, it's perfect for what we need. We've had rehearsals here. We've had callbacks here. We've had table reads here. So if you're a Vegas creative or really just a creative coming into Vegas, definitely check out this space, chat with John. I think you'll find that this studio has everything that you'll need as well. Hi folks, welcome back to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. In this segment, we're discussing the FBI warnings of the increased threats of cyber crimes utilizing artificial intelligence. We've talked about that a lot here on the show of artificial intelligence, AI, and it, we talked about the good points of AI. AI can be great for businesses, great for individuals, students and, and academia alike. However, with all of the good things that AI can offer, bad guys are always finding a way to utilize something that's good for society and making it bad. In recent years, the convergence of this technology of AI has been used by cyber criminals to acquire information and fake data from innocent folks and innocent businesses. Like we talked about earlier in the previous segment, the healthcare industry had a variety of types of uh, business face unpredictable challenges due to sophistication of AI driven attacks. The stake, they have been highly uh, vulnerable to certain attacks involving ransomware folks, ransomware targeting the vulnerabilities of businesses using AI. Now with AI employed, there's things called fake, deep fake and fake scams that AI criminals are utilizing to coerce businesses into giving up personal identifiable information. The FBI has issued a stark warning of these types of threats and for people and businesses to understand the increased uh, vulnerability and take measures to look at sort of uh, these types of advertisements or ways that criminals are trying to get their information. The FBI, FBI in San Francisco has an intensive warning about this types of AI, and they demonstrate this by announcing at the RSA Cybersecurity Conference um, this alert, letting representatives in the cybersecurity world and others know about the criminal capabilities of this crime. These AI tools that criminals use enable them with sophisticated phishing campaigns that can be used to target organizations um, using convey of, of messages, striking individuals using by phishing or spear phishing. This increasing challenges shows that this types of information is very, very sensitive and showing the importance how criminals are using this to acquire data from small businesses and large as well. Moreover, the engaging of this AI powered voice and voice cloning represents the significant threats 
I mean, voice cloning, folks. AI now can take your voice and have it sound like you. Criminals can use this to create hyperphonic, um, hyper-realistic, that is, audio and visual content, impersonate um, people by giving trusted content and manipulating vi victims into unauthorized transactions and divulging confidential information. The FBI special agents in charge of this, um, Robert, Robert, um, let's see, Ripper, uh, also emphasizes that the technology involves these type of cyber attack methods can be very, very harmful, and how attackers are using the AI to enhance the sophistication of their fraud attacks. Here, we have a story for you that I'd like to present coming to you from that conference in San Francisco from the news station KPIX, CBS News, the Bay Area. In a promising sign, San Francisco's Moscone Center is bustling with activity this week. Thousands of people are in town for the annual RSA Tech Conference. Lorena Ayub caught up with one of them, a professional hacker. With over 40,000 people from 130 countries present, the RSA Conference continues its massive cybersecurity gathering here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Now, I spoke with attendees, and they tell me they're happy to see that this conference is still in the Bay Area. It's one of the largest and most prestigious cybersecurity conferences globally. This year's RSA conference brings together the boldest and brightest in cybersecurity. That includes guest speaker and tech founder, Casey Ellis. Casey is a professional hacker who created the company Bug Crowd, ensuring programs like election systems and even aviation systems are hack-proof. Essentially what we do is we take, you know, all of the people that hack computers in good faith, so the good version of hackers, um, locksmiths, not burglars in that sense, from all around the world and connect them with security problems that need to be solved. The themes focused on this year include burnout, risk management, and of course, the rapid developments around AI. Casey believes with such innovation happening so quickly, it's important to make room for prioritizing security efforts. You know, the speed of progress in general is, is the biggest kind of threat across all sectors at this point in time. There's such a pressure to innovate and get new technology out into the market. And, and you know, haste is kind of the natural enemy of, uh, of making good decisions that reduce risk. And speaking of risk, Linda Gray Martin, the SVP of the conference, says despite chatter around the safety of the Bay Area and conversations around new possible locations, she feels confident that San Francisco continues to be the sacred and secure location for the annual gathering. You know, we've been in San Francisco for the past 33 years, and we often say it's in our DNA. I mean, it really is a great location from our, for us. It's in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's in the heart of the technology industry. And Casey agrees. He planted his company in the Bay Area over a decade ago, and he believes the cybersecurity conference belongs here. Look, it's how it's always been. So I think there's an element of, like, this is my hometown conference. It almost feels like a homecoming con. Because, uh, you know, over the years of building Bug Crowd here, all of the folk that I've worked with, you know, they kind of, like, this is kind of a meeting point for everyone. So I, I kind of love that aspect of it. A meeting point for the world of technology still seated in the city by the bay. The RSA conference runs through Thursday. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was one of the many keynote speakers there. He will be there with other government officials, along with representatives from OpenAI, IBM, and other companies. The conference closes with a performance by Alicia Keys. As you can see, folks, to combat these types of threats, the FBI advises adopting a vigilant and proactive measures such as implementing multi-factor authentication and ensuring awareness of suspicious communications. We have said that as well in our show here at Cybersecurity Awareness TV as well. The FBI's <clears throat> Internet Crime uh, Complaint Center also provides uh, resources of, and support for effective ways to protect yourself from these types of AI threats. You can also find information about that coming from our website to at Vanderson Cyber Group, VandersonCyberGroup.com, folks. We must stay proactive and not reactive to these types of threats. These criminals are always looking for ways, folks, to find and coerce us, our employees, now using fake AI. And folks, this AI is very sophisticated, it can mimic you and your voice, your family, and it cause it could be a very serious threat.
we must stay aware of this and do what we can by educating ourselves, folks. Stay cyber woke as well. We'll be back after these messages. Introducing CS Now Staffing, led by yours truly, Laura Nowlin. As the founder and president, I bring over 17 years of expertise in sourcing for talent, building winning teams of professionals, marketing, and workforce development. At CS Now Staffing, we're not just a staffing agency. We're your strategic partner in building a winning team of professionals for your business. My passion for community service extends to connecting entrepreneurs with local resources. Recognized by the Small Business Administration as the 2022 Nevada Family Owned Business of the Year, we're not just changing the workforce landscape, we're defining it. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. I'm your host, Mac Jackson, Jr. So in this episode, we talked about the importance of cybersecurity education everywhere. We've talked about how hackers are going after large corporations and attacking them. Imagine your small company, folks. One or two employees, hackers will go after you. Some of the questions I get from my clients include, why would a hacker come after my small business? Because in the future, folks, you will work with a large corporation. A hacking attack, folks, is not a single attack on your business. It is a campaign. They will wait on your servers and wait for years until they find information they can break into your organization. It's important for you to make sure you adopt cybersecurity awareness training and education for your employees to maintain security and protection from these types of cyber threats. To find out more about this, you can go to my website at macjacksonjr.com. That's macjacksonjr.com to find out more information about my presentations on cybersecurity awareness. You can also go to my company's consulting website, and that's at Vanderson Cyber Group. That's vandersoncybergroup.com to find out how you can protect your business from the fastest growing crimes of the 21st century. That's all we have for you this week, folks. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you next week on Cybersecurity Awareness TV.